morning, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster members and guests. Um, have you ever been to a ballet or a Broadway dance live performance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed how they can say so much, so much without <laughs> even speaking? How can they impact your emotions from the distance? The best way to illustrate body language is through dance. One of my favorite hobbies is dancing. I have taken dance classes from salsa to ballet to jazz to contemporary dance. Since I started dancing at 12, I've been always fascinated by the way that dancers master different movement techniques with the beats of the music while they are doing the choreography on time and projecting facial expressions that convey another message. And at the same time, they remember the choreography and they anticipate the rest of the choreography. For me, that's amazing. And that's why I want to introduce you today to some of the techniques that dancers use at that, at, and that we can apply as a speaker as well. So the first skill that dancers learn is posture. How to have the right posture. Since our first classes, we are told, we have been told, that there is a string that pulls us up, stretching out our body, reaching the ceiling, and the, importance, the important role of the core. As posture is important for dancers to keep spinning while doing turns, posture is important for speakers to project their voice to the back of the room and to see more and look more confident. So from now on, remember that there is a street that pulls you up, lift your shin, shoulders back, and you're ready to do your speech. The second skill that dancers learn is gestures. How to use your arms, head, on, and arms, and hands in a gracefully way. Um, Sometimes speakers are, by the movement they do, they can, they can seem uncomfortable. Maybe by crunching their hands or ripping the leg turn with so much force that, that they look like they are tense. So there are some gestures that we can use. Some descriptive gestures, for instance. Descriptive gestures, we use them to indicate a location, a position, or anything tactical. For instance, we can use our hands to specify a number of objects. And then we have the emphatic gestures. The emphatic gestures, we use them to express an emotion. For instance, I can put my hand here on, on my heart, and that conveys a message that I'm speaking from my heart or that I strongly believe in the message that I'm trying to convey. So that's for gestures. Then we have the use of space. The third skill that dancers master is the use of your own space. Because dancers, they usually do transitions. They move from one point to the other of a stage. Without crushing into each other, sometimes choreography can be very dangerous because you can literally kick out, out of some, another dancer out of a stage if you don't control and master your use of your own space. So for speakers, it's the same thing. But speakers have the advantage that they usually are by themselves speaking. But even though we need to learn to, to use properly our space, and there are certain intentional movements that speakers can do to, um, that are meaningful and support better your presentation. For instance, if you um, move forward, step forward, you can emphasize a point of your speech. If you move lateral, you can emphasize a transition in your speech. If you are next to the lectern or in front of the lectern, you can emphasize or uh, you can appear to be more open to the audience. And the same thing goes if you, are, you combine a stillness with a verbal pause, you can add drama and intrigue to your speech as well. And last but not least, eye contact. It's very important for dancers to connect with the audience and they accentuate the eye contact with the head, using their head. So the last person in the, back, in the room can see and appreciate what they are doing. So it's the same for speakers. We need to use properly eye contact and don't keep staring at one person like for three hours, but just you know, have like a timing of three seconds and move you know, the side ar around the room. 
And if you don't feel comfortable, you can also focus on a point in the back of the room. I hope you find these tips um, useful and you can apply them in your daily life. Woo